Check it out. It's a working vending machine, minifig scale. <laughs> this was so hard to figure out. Look at all of these prototypes that I had to build before I finally figured out the finished design. I'm going to show you uh, all of these because I think it's quite interesting, but if you want to get straight to the building instructions, the timestamp for that is right here, and there are chapters as well. But before I get to the instructions, oh my goodness, it's a Flexi Spot standing desk. Today's video sponsor. Oh, Flexi Spot. This is the E7, a premium desk, but they have lots of different options to choose from at different price points in different sizes. So they'll probably have something that will fit your needs just right. There's even stuff to convert a normal desk into a standing desk. The desks at the higher price points have more load capacity, but not even Flexi Spot seems to know what people would use that for. Weights? Just chillin'? Maybe a hammock. The lift mechanisms work great, they're smooth, quiet, and have been tested for thousands of adjustments. FlexiSpot also offers lots of useful accessories like drawers, cable management trays, and even wheels. The E7, like most of their desks, has a little readout to show exactly how tall it is at any moment, as well as programmable presets to perfectly preserve a person's preferred prominence. So get yourself a FlexiSpot standing desk today using my link below. Thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring, and now I'm going to talk about all the prototypes that went into making this, because I think that's the most interesting part of the video. Basically, I just wanted some vending machines for the LEGO Town, but they had to be minifig scale, and I wanted them to actually work, and I could not find anything like that on the internet. So I finally decided, fine, I'll do it myself. I got the idea to save my prototype from this video, LEGO Flipwalker from JK Brickworks. And then, ta-da, there's the finished one. He's only got the one prototype. Well, I ended up with, uh, <laughs> with a bunch of them. I knew at the start that I wanted to have all the sodas, that it would be about like this, in a, in a hopper? Is it called a hopper? No, a magazine? Whatever. And that they would be gravity-fed, they'd come down, and they'd come out like that. And I also knew that I wanted to have a little window in the front where you could see that happening. So you can kind of see with this one how the soda is supposed to come down from the top. Actually, it's supposed to come down onto here and then it shifts and then it comes through, come on, <laughs> through there and it shifts back and then the soda falls down through the bottom. This didn't work, obviously. So uh, redesign. Can you see inside there? There's a soda can that is stuck in there. I, I, I couldn't decide if I wanted like a two liter bottle or a, or a soda can. It almost works, but the, the soda is supposed to come down here, roll down there, and then come back through the bottom. But still didn't quite work. Let's go to the next one. So let's try loading it. There we go. Goes to the bottom. Let's see if this actually works. Oh, hey, 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 it does work. But I think it only works with one, oh, get in there, get in. I think that having two actually gums it up. Yeah, see that? The mere fact that that bottle is there stops this from being pushed back far enough, you see the little gap right there, that the bottle underneath can't get through. So actually, if I take that out, and then I push it in, see? Now it works, right? Here's the next design. The problem with this one is that it works too well, they all just come spilling out um, because it's just, <laughs> it's just one of these. It just pushes back and forth. It'll be easier to see that on the, on the next one, which is the same thing, but I actually built it a little more robustly. So let's fill that up. Oh, oh yeah, see they're, they're already coming through because not only do you need to advance the cans forward, you need to stop the next one from coming through. You want only one to go through. So like this technically could work. See? Technically could work. The problem is that it's really unreliable in that if you open it, then they can all just fall out. You see that? Right? So having the can be the only thing stopping the next cans from coming through is just not a good enough system. Yeah, so that's how that one works. Not good enough. 
So this one was kind of a big deal. This one actually works. <laughs> if we take the hopper off, you can see the mechanism is uh, uh, one of these. The can will sit here and then it'll move like that. Can falls in. The next can is sitting here. And as the thing gets pushed forward, it works like that. This can is prevented from leaving and it can't go that way because the hopper's in the way. And that guy comes out, see? So let's put the hopper on and I'll show it actually working. Oh, and then you can see to prevent this from going too far forward or backward, I've got this little thing right here stopping it. The trouble being, of course, that it requires a whole extra stud of space. And with my original intention being minifig scale, well, I wanted the whole thing to be four by four. And right now this is six by six studs and that is just way too big. Right, so there's no spring on this one, but uh, if I just do it manually, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Works really well, doesn't it? So the only step now is to put a spring on it, which is what I did with this next one. And I color coordinated it. So this is, well, it's not the same design. As you can see, instead of just pushing on this, there's a button now to push on. Ooh, let's load it up. I was so proud of this one. You push the button. Ta-da, you got your soda. Well, it's not perfect. <laughs> And that's all there is. Now, if you remove this little bar here on the front, some of the magic gets revealed. You can see, oh, there, there was another one. You can see this thing here. If I take the hopper off, you can see how this worked, right? So there's the same mechanism as the last one, but I just have this thing on it that has a button. And I really wanted like a proper button and this was the only design that had it. And you can also see here, see these two things? Those, with the bottom of this being hollow, are exactly what it needs to stop itself from going too far forward and backwards. See that? That's cool. Okay, so put the spring on. Boing! Always satisfying. Uh, the other problem with this is that because this kind of has to be here, it's hard to push the button in all the way. Uh, so you have to kind of like get at it from the top and then it'll work. Right? But it's just kind of annoying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this was so far the best and most reliable mechanism. So again, with the plan being minifig scale, this thing is just way too big, right? And the biggest issue with it is that it has to be six by whatever, because with the way that it's designed, this bit has to be this big. I can't make this any smaller right? And then you have to have walls around it. Otherwise, this part is just going to be exposed. Also, you can't even have any more machine up there because what are you going to hold it on with? So what I had to do was start thinking about snot building or studs not on top. You can see a piece is way thinner this way than it is this way. And that's how I'm going to save all that space. So then, I don't even know if this one works, but this was like kind of a big deal. This was a total redesign and it's, it's really janky. But again, the idea is that you're building sideways to save space. And here's the little pusher bit. And I think, yeah, a can does fit in there. And also you can load it from the top. Uh, I guess I'm gonna try it. Can you see inside there? Yeah. For some reason it gets gummed up. Yeah, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Well, anyway, that one was a big deal. So that led to the next one, which does this have, it does have a rubber band on it. Okay, I think this one actually works. And, well, spoke too soon. Uh, one of the problems is that they kind of get stuck. Oh, here we go. Oh, it works. Gotta help gravity a little bit. <laughs> so it works. Um, and big deal here, I figured out that I don't need to move this by one entire stud. I can move it by only half a stud and it still works just as well. 
You can also see that I figured out uh, a little rubber band thing. See that? Ooh. And I figured out how to uh, stop it from moving forward and back simply by using one of these pieces to kind of hook around. I stop it from moving forward and then I used this piece right here. Now that it's removed, it can keep going, see? To stop it from going backwards. This is the big deal one that really let me know that this was actually possible. Okay, next one. This one actually has a proper lid on it. And let's fill her up. Put the lid back on. And... Oh, it got stuck. Come on. Ah! This one works really quite well. And I redid the mechanism for the rubber band. See how I uh, tied it differently? Oh, and the other issue with this one is that you see how there's a gap right now? See, it doesn't open all the way. Just because the rubber band gets in its own way, then it won't release the soda can. So the redesign fixed that in that it always goes all the way. Of course, I, uh, I wrapped the rubber band around twice, so it actually requires a lot of force to push that. Notice how the, uh, the center bar here is on a half stud. The, the Technic piece has a hollow stud on the top, so you can actually do that. All right. Next one, and um, <laughs> it's so smooth. Well, come on. Okay, look, here's the thing. Sometimes it still doesn't work because although Lego pieces are actually slightly, slightly smaller than the uh, eight millimeter distance between studs, if you kind of clamp it too hard, the soda can still won't be able to get all the way through. Sometimes they still require a little bit of encouragement. Um, but this one, I was really proud of this one. Uh, the underside is the same design. And um, you can see inside now, because I used these, those cute little buttons. I mean, what, what more can I say? I even put a little vent on the back. It's so cute. There's not enough room to make it drop the soda can inside the machine. So it just drops it on the ground, whatever. That's just how I'm gonna do it. And, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, like, yeah, I gave up on the idea of the button being the thing that makes the soda can come through. I decided, fine, it'll just be what is on a normal machine. Um, the flap that you put your hand into to grab something from out, out of the machine. And it's just, that's just how it's gonna be because there's not enough room in such a small machine to put a whole other layer of bricks on that you would need to make that button seamless unless you have this stupid thing, which I don't wanna have. I want it to be a flat front. This next design is really special and maybe if you build this, you'll wanna build this one uh, because this has two extra interactions. You can put in a coin, you put it in the slot, get in there, get in there, doop to pay for your drink, and then you push the button in, and you get that drink out. Now, <laughs> pushing the buttons in doesn't actually do anything, and putting the coin in also does not actually do anything. But you can pretend that it does. Put in the coin, choose your drink, boop. <laughs> One more time, put in the coin, choose your drink, and boop, you get the drink out. It's just hollow all the way through the machine. And I imagine that when the, the guy comes to empty the machine, I don't know, he goes behind the back and kind of, maybe he has like a stick that he uses to push the coins <laughs> out the back <laughs> to get them back out. And then he refills the machine. With sometimes having to like grab the cans out that get stuck and push it, you kind of end up losing the coins. So I decided not to go with the coin slot, but it was a fun idea. Oh yeah, and you can also see that I switched up the top design. I didn't want it to be two plates thick, but there's really nothing that I could do about that. The lid is like the least impressive, least iterated upon thing of this, of this final design. So if you find a better way to do the lid, you let me know. Moving on to the final design. I want stickers on here. I want this to say push. 
I want the Coca-Cola logo on the side. Didn't end up doing that because guess what? Even though I bought some transparent labels, these are clear, you can print straight on them with an ink inkjet printer, I don't have white ink. <laughs> like, I didn't realize, oh, of course, you need the white of the paper to do that. So I thought, okay, fine, I'll print on the envelope stamps that I have. But the trouble is that the red that I can print is nowhere near as red as the red of a Lego. Dun, dun, dun. So like, here's a Lego print. You can see they have white ink and they have the ability to not print on certain parts. And the ink is really, really flat where you can still slide over this with another Lego piece and it's still within tolerance. I really appreciate the, uh, the way that Lego prints work now that I've tried doing it myself. Anyway, anyway, I ultimately decided Fine, I will just print on envelope stamps um, the Coke swoosh because I can cut it out. You can see if you look real closely that uh, there's still a little bit of gray on there from where I, uh, I didn't cut in close enough and I thought, yeah, good enough, whatever. I wanted the Coke logo, but I can't stencil that out. There's no way. I'm not going to cut that out. And then here for the buttons, I just printed a bunch of little Cokes in a row on an envelope stamp and I cut them out using a uh, three ring hole puncher. Put them right on there. They're a little messy because my hole puncher sucks. You see, you only have one choice with this machine. It's Coke or Coke. You could also have Coke or you can have Coke. I really wanted to put a Coke sticker on the can. The trouble is there's no way that these would actually fit in the machine and still have it work smoothly if I added the thickness of a piece of paper. Like the tolerances are very small. And of course you can also see, ta-da, that there are little prints for the top of soda cans, which is just so great. I ordered those in, they just came a few days ago. So there it is, that is the full design iteration for this machine. It works so well. Uh, I put some flat tiles here. It actually results in the cans not making it further out, which is counterintuitive, but that was the consistent result. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I finished my design, I found out that Lego beat me to the punch four years ago. This is from a Ninjago set. This is amazing. This solves so many of the problems that I had, and I'm kind of glad I didn't find it before I made mine. It is not intuitive how this works, but you put the $100 bill in, boink, you take it out, and you get your soda. Take it out, well, okay. It's uh, actually not perfect, but the thing is, it's so much better for kids. With mine, if you don't put the soda in exactly correctly, that is going to get stuck. It'll gum up the whole, well, it's already stuck. It'll gum up the whole works, and, and then you're gonna have to take it off and pour it out, and it's gonna be, it's just gonna be stupid. With this one, the sodas go in vertically, so you cannot screw it up. And I was considering doing it that way after all the annoyance of all these other designs, but ultimately I, I really wanted to have them be like this, and you can fit more of them in if you do them horizontally. It's not quite minifig scale. Like, look look at how tall that machine is compared to the guy. I think my design is definitely more appropriately scaled. All right, so let's open this up and you can see the genius. They have a window in the front. These are not the correct colors, by the way. So originally, yeah, I thought that these would spin to make the soda go through somehow, but they don't actually spin. They're not wheels. They're just there to prevent it from going left or right. Okay, so uh, the back goes on right here. I'm gonna put on one of the walls and then you can see how it works. Yeah, these are also just here uh, as part of the hopper system. They just prevent the sodas from going left or right. The sodas stack on top of each other. You can see that it's stopped by the teeny little ledge and you hit it with the $100 bill. You just push it backwards. That's it. It's like, it's so simple. And geniusly, of course, You've got the next one on top, 
and as soon as you push the first one, the next one will land on top of the dollar bill. Now check this out. Oh, it's just, look at that. It's barely on the edge of the $100 bill. And as soon as you take it away, come on, it'll fall down. It's barely on the edge. You put the dollar bill back. Come on, obviously the hopper's not in the way right now. It just pushes the soda out of the way and down out the bottom. So much more playable than mine. It's easier to reload and it never gets jammed up and it solves the problem of the money, right? Like with mine, I thought, oh yeah, I'll just put a coin in there and it doesn't actually matter. But with this one, you actually need money to buy the soda. That's so clever. Ah, ah. All right, now for the instructions. First up, here's all the pieces that you will need to build this. There's also an XML file linked in the description that you can plug into BrickLink if you want to see them in that format. Next up, we have the uh, video instructions. I know this is going too fast, don't worry. You're supposed to pause to look at these, but if you don't want to do that, there's also a PDF linked in the description. And finally, just for fun, really, here's a stop motion video of the thing being built. <laughs> Hello, so at this point you should have these two pieces. You can tell that they go together, but we're not doing that yet. And you should have all of this. Photo instructions do not work well for what I'm about to do, so it just has to be a video. Here's what we're trying to make. Basically, all we have left to do is wrap this rubber band around these two components. I want you to grab a Lego rod of some type, which you'll use to put inside of these little stud pieces here. So, get that, and now first step, is to grab this and split it in half. Oops, you gotta get uh, that part off as well. Let's just put this back together. So yeah, I had you construct the whole thing. Now you're gonna have to take it apart a little bit. I just want you to extract these two pieces, these hollow studs. And they are hollow, so we can put a rod through the center, just like that. I mean, if you don't have hollow ones, well, have fun with this part. So then take your rubber band, put it over the top like that, and then hold it and rotate counterclockwise, and then put the other end on the top just like that. So now you need to line up the rubber band so that it is only on those two black pieces. So it's a little fiddly, but you can get it. Yeah, so one of the loops goes around the top piece and the other, come on, goes around the bottom. Come on, get on there. Okay, hey, there it is. And, very important, this uh, rubber band is overlapping from bottom left to top right. That's the one on top, with uh, the stud being on top there. Right, so now you gently, carefully, take that off of the rod. You don't need the rod anymore. Now you can simply reassemble the thing that you uh, disassembled to make this happen. So reassemble it so that the X is kind of pointed towards the back corner, just like that. Yeah, just like that. And then we put this back together. Ta-da! Perfect. And now the only thing left to do is to wrap one of these around uh, this piece right here, which we're going to do right now. So, to do that, get yourself a bobby pin. I have a hilariously oversized one. There's no Lego piece that's sharp enough to get in there, so you're gonna have to use something. Be careful. With your bobby pin, is this called a bobby pin? It's a safety pin. So get the tip of the safety pin underneath this rubber band there. It needs to be the one that's closest to the center, right? So this one on the right side. Just, I don't know, close it so that it's a little... <laughs> safer, you don't poke yourself. And then we need to get this piece inside there. So this part's a little tricky. You just gotta get this, oh, see that happens a lot. You gotta get this piece. Hair is in the way. Okay. You gotta get a haircut. I know I gotta get a haircut. Yeah, there's, there's no easy way to do this. You almost need three hands. Maybe have somebody help you out. But you gotta get this piece into, there we go into there. Um, it needs to be on that stud there, you know, on the, on the top black piece right there. 
And now the final step is just to remove the safety pin carefully. Ah! <laughs> carefully, carefully, carefully. Ooh, there we go. And now we have, oh no! Now you remove the safety pin carefully. Uh, we can see that it's not entirely in the middle. We wanna get that, oh yeah, completely out. The X has moved completely in the middle. Now, if this was like a real Lego set, they would have some special piece or two pieces that would make this way easier. <laughs> but this is what I got, sorry. And now for the last step of just assembling this, which is very simple, just don't explode it like I did. We're gonna put that piece right on there. And we're gonna put this piece right on the top, down right, right like that. Aha! We've got our vending machine. And then the lid goes on top and the sodas will go inside there. Now here's the thing. Sometimes this mechanism is not perfect. Sometimes it ends up with, you've just got a teeny, teeny gap. You see that? Like a teeny gap and the soda won't come out. So if that happens, there's two things you can do. One is you can kind of try to loosen up the whole mechanism, like just, just kind of pull just a little bit, pull the machine just a teeny bit apart. And the other one is, again, with the safety pin, you can kind of uh, make this rubber band tighter. So what you do is you just grab the, carefully, you grab the other one that is not being used for the mechanism and you just kind of pull on it a little and you kind of get some extra slack, get in there, get some extra slack on the part of the rubber band that's not being used and then it'll just be tighter and it'll pull harder and uh, it's more likely that it'll go the entire distance. So first of all, your sodas always have to go in with the soda can top facing in this direction because this is not perfectly smooth on that side. So let's put a soda in and aha, Look, it kind of catches just a little teeny bit at the top. And that's because although there are teeny tiny gaps between Lego pieces, uh, sometimes there's just, sometimes they're not entirely clamped down. So if you're having trouble with your sodas, yeah, getting in there, then what you got to do, oh, it still works. <laughs> then what you got to do is just get yourself a long uh, Lego piece like this. This is a one by eight and flip it around like this and simply insert it and push in both directions, push in this direction and in that direction, and just kind of just widen it just, just a little bit, just widen the area, and then your sodas should go right in. You also want to make sure that these lids are clamped down as tightly as possible so that they fit with no issues. Yeah, get those in there. And let's see if it works. Ha-ha! It works. Last step, of course, is to put it on the base plate. Just like that. See if it works. Ha ha, that's great. Never gets old. Last thing, All right, you see this piece right here. This is a kind of an old style shutter piece. And somebody, not me, has uh, deliberately removed those two little bits. Uh, but if you have one that has those, that's fine. Just have them pointing downwards, and I don't think it should interfere with the mechanism at all. The reason why I used one solid piece rather than just two one-by-one -one bricks stacked on top of each other is because you have to push on this. And as such, if you've got two pieces, you can sometimes end up with them being like this, like a little bit bowing inwards. And if it's like that, well, that's going to stop the very tight tolerances here. It'll stop the sodas from escaping uh, and going down. If you don't have this shutter piece, then it might also work to use one of these uh, snot bricks with the two studs on top of each other. I'll put the part number on screen. And then you also have to add a single one by one plate to the top of that and then you can have that facing down as well and that shouldn't interfere with anything but yeah the uh two bricks on top of each other is not a great solution also because you can kind of rotate the top one accidentally and then that'll definitely block the cans from getting in and that's why i have this extra little gray piece right here with the uh sort of half moon design 
to really stop this from rotating. Notice also that sometimes it simply doesn't work no matter what you do, even though everything looks correct. Well, guess what? It's very, very subtle, but this piece here is slightly twisted. So basically, if it's slanted slightly like this, it will definitely not work, but if it is straight or slanted ever so slightly like this, it will work. So I'm just gonna go in here and adjust that to be straight. And now it functions. Ta-da! And the great thing about them is you can actually stack, ah, that one's, I took it apart. You can actually stack them all next to each other and they will still work. Ah, just imagine that one's not broken. Does he glitter? <laughs>